I'm sure you guys also have suffered the same problem as I did because I run virtualized hosts and dockerized hosts and stuff like that. But the machine I'm running that on is quite bulky and it consumes quite a lot of power. So I have been searching for alternatives that consume on the one hand very low power, are kind of tiny and at the same time offer decent performance and possibly uh, faster than 1G Ethernet ports. There is this device I tested about a year ago. It is a uh, Decisa DEC740 and it had been shipped with Opian Sense, which is a really nice solution for your firewall. I also wanted to try out if other operating systems would start on that device since it is x86. I installed OpenWRT and it ran very nicely on it. When I got the device back in 2022, I also tried to install Debian or other operating systems on it. I kind of failed. Quite recently I started over and I tried again and created a USB Debian boot device and well, it still didn't just work, even though I flashed a newer BIOS firmware. The problem was that the boot menu just didn't show up and I tinkered around with a couple of different options and I actually found a solution. So I was able to install Proxmox onto it. So I have a decent CPU, an AMD CPU with a couple of cores. I upgraded to 16 gigabytes of memory and I installed a bigger SSD drive and now I'm going to show you how I did that. For that I'm switching over to my screen. Alright, here we are booting the device and in order to get into the BIOS settings you need to press the escape button and then it shows the setup utility. Unfortunately the highlighted item isn't readable or visible in any way so you get the idea, read it before you select it. <laughs> and now we have to go to the FCH, op F FCH options and the UART configuration options. And when you have a stock device, it will show different settings. It's on enabled and the UART legacy options are disabled. And here you usually have the UART AMD driver enabled. It's not possible to boot a Debian system with these settings and getting a serial console output. Instead you have to enable a COM and select the AMD serial driver. And if you plan on running virtualized machines. There is another setting you need to enable. It's in the advanced tab and then go to CPU related settings. You need to enable the SVM support. And now we can save and exit. Now I'm going to try to boot my USB Debian 11.6 flash drive. Um, it's the Linpus. Here we go. So this is what happens. It just says welcome to grub, but you won't get to the point where you normally would enable the console output. So I had to figure out a way to solve that. And what I did was I just installed a Proxmox onto a, onto a normal NVMe in my regular computer made sure that the network interface uh, was reachable. Well, I wasn't able to because I don't know what the interface names will be when I boot Debian on this DSC 740. So what I did was I will show you what I did in order to get output. So let's boot my installed Debian. Wait a second. All right, this time I will let the device boot and just, as you can see, here is a boot menu. And I will just let it boot to the end. It will take some time. I will fast forward. 
So now we head into Etsy default and have a look into Grub. So in this line here, you say console equals TTY0 and then 150,208. And GFX payload equals text is uh, to tell the system it should uh, output in text form. All right, and now you can see that we have a virtual environment here with a ZFS pool and plenty of memory to work with. And of course, a very decent performance, as you can see in my written and uh, AV <laughs> audiovisual video I published last year. So if you haven't seen it already, I suggest you take a look at it because this is really for once a very powerful machine and a very decent performing machine when it comes to power hungriness. Just one important reminder, the manufacturer, the CISO, does not support this kind of setups. They ship their devices with OPN Sense for a specific reason, so they can give the user a very solid experience. The hardware and the software interact very well together. But if you are a tinker like me, you might take a look into this kind of solution where you can virtualize your OPN Sense instance or even run other systems on the same hardware at the same time while having good CPU performance and fast Ethernet connections. If you have questions regarding this specific setup, this configuration, just leave a comment or a question down below. And I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. See you next time. Bye bye.